Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, so welcome back. Uh, let us resume uh, our discussion about computing. So I came across this very uh, good book, uh, uh, Discovering Computers 2018. The very good part, the very good thing about this book is that it is the latest. It is. It was published in 2018. So it pretty much covers uh, whatever is happening, uh, whatever is latest in this field. Uh, although, like we we are using technology so much in, in our lives nowadays, and we come across the so many new things and applications and technologies, that most of these things are like common knowledge nowadays. But in any case, since this this course introduction is computer introduction to computing courses, perhaps um, the only course that you will in which you will have some opportunity to formally increase your digital literacy so we will cover something we will cover many things that may sound apparently very mundane or simple or common uh, we will cover these things uh, so this is a very good book if you come across uh, a hard copy of it you should buy it and keep it with yourself for reference uh, otherwise uh, we'll try to cover as much of it as possible in this course so let's uh, get started this is our outline for today's lecture uh, here like we have uh, let me get a pointer uh, so here we have uh, uh, these things are uh, from our past lectures uh, if you remember in our last lecture we were talking we talked about floats or how real values are represented in, on a computer we will stitch that discussion and complete it uh, with an example uh, so then we will build we will be done with the binary number systems and the binary representation of uh, different types of data so we talked about all types of data and uh, I guess real values was uh, the last point on that agenda so that will be we will stitch our uh, our con conversation on that and we'll be done with it uh, then I we wanted I wanted to talk about some terms. Uh, I have explicitly added those terms on a single on a slide, so we will talk about those terms. These terms will keep on appearing, and we may like uh, uh, repeat these terms or come across these terms again. But uh, I won't, nevertheless I wanted to mention them separately before we delve uh, further into uh, this course. Uh, then again, uh, many things that that you may see in these slides today we might have talked about uh, these things before in our past lectures uh, but in any case uh, uh, we will go through this uh, all over again and wherever uh, I feel that like we have spent some time uh, on a particular topic before I'll skip through that topic faster than usual okay so I hope you will uh, try to be attentive and you will try to catch up with whatever we are discussing so we will be looking at uh, some things that are very simple for example you know what a laptop is and what tablets are and desktops and servers but formally like we will differentiate between them once again then we will uh, also describe the purpose and uses of uh, many digital or computing devices that you might be using in your normal lives or some of you might be using in our no normal in your normal lives uh, for example smartphones most of you have digital cameras some of you might have you uh, although the uh, digital cameras inside your smartphones they are powerful and good enough uh, and do and people like do not feel they need to buy any specific uh, uh, a special purpose digital camera uh, then uh, some of you might have been using portable digital media players uh, some of you might uh, have heard about uh, ebook readers such as Kindle or, or, or things like these and wearable devices are again very getting very common so those who those of you who are into fitness so they want to count uh, the num amount of calories that you have burned so they, they, they pr pretty much use wearable devices to do that or your phone comes with an app so your phone is also you know, like you can kind of consider it as a wearable device. So wearable device is something that you wear on your body. And then there are game consoles. Uh, many of you might have heard about PlayStation or the Nintendo uh, Wii or Xbox. 
So these are all game consoles that you can use for playing games if you are into games. Uh, we have talked about that we have differentiated between the term data information and we have introduced computers as data processing machines. So we'll skip over these things. Then we'll talk about different input devices. Uh, we'll differentiate between the internet and the web and we'll discuss what web pages are and what, what websites are and what web servers are. Again, these would be very brief introduction to these uh, ideas. These will not in any case give you expert level knowledge on these things but they will nevertheless uh, make you literate with these terms you will know these terms you will you will be able to make sense of these terms whenever you whenever you have this kind of communication uh, or interaction with other people related uh, related to these things we'll explain the purpose of a browser or internet internet browser so you you are you you use these browsers so you may you know what Internet Explorer is or Microsoft Edge is, these are browsers or what Mozilla, Mozilla Firefox is or what Safari is or what Opera is. These are all different browsers that you or software that you use to uh, access the World Wide Web. Uh, so you know the you already know the purpose of this. So this is a formal introduction to it, uh, nothing more. And then you also you also know search engines. So you have been using Google uh, most probably to search for things on the internet. So Google is a search engine, and it's so popular that Google Google has now become a verb in the English language. So whenever you need to look up something, uh, you say you don't say just look it up. You say Google it. So so now it has become sort of a verb. Uh, and then again online social networks or social media Facebook and Twitter and now uh, TikTok and YouTube and all these these are different types of uh, social media platforms so we'll just introduce like this is sort of introduction to all this uh, then we'll brief briefly describe uh, uh, the risks associated with digital uh, media. Uh, we may talk about, we, we will introduce you to the concept of uh, like viruses and malware and privacy and health and environment. Like all these concerns are also important concerns that are related to computing. They, they may not seem directly related, but they are related. Some are, some may seem, some may be very apparent to you like viruses and malware and privacy. Uh, but uh, some factors they get ignored for example health and environment uh, these things may get in, uh, ignored then we'll also introduce uh, the operating system and applications uh, these things uh, like what are these these will this is this will be just an introduction uh, we'll also talk about different technologies uh, that are used to connect to the internet uh, we will also look into how society uses these technologies in education, uh, in government, in finance, and retail, in entertainment, etc., etc. So we'll mention like some of the applications again. Uh, even if we do not like, if we cannot for the for the sake of time or due to limitations on our time, if we cannot go into these details. These are these are areas where you can look it up, like look, you can look up the applications of computing in all these areas, and it is very important. Like computing has revolutionized almost each and every field, and these are all important areas that have uh, been affected for betterment by computing. And then we'll identify technology that common home users who who use computers in, at their homes. Uh, our small offices, uh, the kind of technologies that they use, uh, our users who are mobile always on the move, uh, what kind of technologies they use, or power user, enterprise users. So, uh, where all these types of users, the kind of technologies that they use, we will briefly touch upon that. So let's start with our discussion of floats. So if you remember, we talked about like what the point of discussing this thing is that we said that if you have a very simple uh, like uh, computers, they store data in, in binary ones and zeros. 
and not just the data they store everything in binary so data whether it is numbers whether it is text whether it is images whether it is uh, audio or video everything is converted into binary okay so uh, even the instructions uh, the instructions that we issue to a computer to do something those instructions are also encoded in binary so if if something is stored on a computer in binary and you look at it it would be nearly impossible for you to to determine what that binary combination of what that combination of ones and zeros represents so you need some you need to be provided with some context in order to understand what that combination of ones and zeros represents so that was basically our point of discussion so we said that so let us look at this example we'll return to this slide so this is just one simple example we have this decimal value 63 and we can store it as a 32 bit integer value okay or we can store it as a 32 bit float value it will remain 63 we'll, we will be able to recover 63 we will be able to print it and add and subtract and all do all those kinds of things with it but if you store it as a 32 bit integer this is how those 32 bi bits will look like okay this is how these 32 bits will look like so all these most significant bits they are zeros and we have uh, these uh, six ones in the least significant position these are all ones okay so this is how 63 would look like if you store it as a 32 bit integer but if you store the same 63 as a 32 bit uh, floating point value okay real value so this is how it would look like now it is the same value but you are using different formats to store it okay uh, and then the resulting bit combination becomes different okay so float this is one way of storing real point uh, uh, real values uh, real values values is the fraction so this is how you can uh, you can store those values and uh, we mentioned in our previous uh, discussions that this format is specified by an IEEE standard IEEE 754 standard okay so the IEEE 754 standard specifies uh, at least like these two formats to store real values one is the single precision floating point format which is this format uh, it stores a real value in 32 bits the other is the double precision uh, floating point format and that stores a real value in 64 bits so we'll just look at this uh, single precision uh, floating point format uh, and we'll see how those 32 bits are organized like uh, what goes into uh, what goes where in those 32 bits so we've talked about this before as well in our last lecture uh, let me reiterate so these 32 bits are divided into three portions so the most significant bit the bit at uh, uh, at position 31 it represents the sign bit it is used to store the sign of the number okay so remember uh, when you are storing real values you can have uh, uh, you have two informations uh, that that uh, that like you have two signs to take care of one is the sign of the actual number the other is the sign of the exponent okay so we'll talk about this that when we want to store a real value inside a computer we first convert it into normalized binary scientific notation and this is normalized binary scientific notation we've talked about scientific notation and normalized scientific notation in a, in a great amount of detail in our class okay so i hope like you know this thing i don't need to repeat it so this is the same like this is 63 in binary this is 63 uh, in binary okay and if i want to convert 63 in binary into in if i want to write it in normalized binary scientific notation what what do i need to do i need to put the decimal right now the decimal is here you can imagine or the decimal point to be here so i have to bring this decimal point to this position after the first non zero bit okay so i need to bring the decimal here and then i need to determine what should be the exponent of 2 so if i write 63 in normalized binary uh, scientific notation this is how it appears okay so this is 1.1111 1 these are five ones okay uh, multiplied by 2 raised to the power 5 this is how 63 looks in normalized uh, binary scientific notation 
so before you can uh, if you want to convert if you want to convert uh, any number into the IEEE uh, floating point format you have to first convert that number into binary and then into normalized binary scientific notation okay this is what you need to do now here we have uh, like two informations uh, two two types of sign information one is the sign of this number so this number is a positive number 63 is a positive number here we have a positive sign okay we do not have a negative sign here let me get a pen so this is a positive number this is a positive number so this is one information sign information that we need to store and the other sign information is the sign of the exponent okay so right now we have the exponent as 5 which is positive so we don't need to worry uh, like we need to worry about it we need to somehow store this sign information in some way so we look at it how does how 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 is this information stored so first this sign information the sign of the actual number not the exponent this is this is the exponent so let us first consider how the sign of the number is stored so the sign of a number is stored in one in in a single bit okay and that bit is the most significant bit bit at uh, position number 31 this is the most significant bit msb so i hope you remember we talked about msb most significant bit it has the highest weight and the LSB, the least significant bit. So I hope you remember these uh, uh, notions as well. So the sign information is stored here. And by convention, if the sign is positive, it is stored as 0. Positive sign is represented by 0. And negative sign is represented by 1. So bit number 31, if it is 0, that means the uh, uh, real value is positive. If it is 1, that means the real value is negative okay that is what it means so the sign information goes here then we have eight bits reserved for the exponent okay we have eight bits reserved for the exponent and these bits are bit number 23 to 30 okay we imagine we, we assume that the, we start uh, numbering the bit positions as zero so these are powers of two these represent power of powers of two so the, the weight of this bit is two raised to power zero the weight of this bit is 2 raised to power 31. Okay? So these uh, positions or indexes, they correspond to the powers of 2. So this is 2, its weight is 2 raised to power 31. So these 8 bits are reserved for the exponent. And the exponent is not just a simple exponent. We store it as a biased exponent. What does that mean? That means we add plus 120, we add 127 with it. We add the positive value. 127 with it okay so we don't just store it as it is for example if you look at the normalized binary scientific representation of 63 uh, it is 1.11111 multiplied by 2 raised to power 5 so the exponent here looks to be 5 but we don't store 5 there we add this value called the bias with 5 uh, and it becomes 132 uh, and then we store 132 uh, in the exponent field. We store 132 in the exponent field. And this is how 132 looks like. Okay, so 132 is basically 128, which is 2 raised to the power 7. This is 128 and plus 4. This is 2 raised to the power 4. The rest, all the powers are 0. Okay, so 138 is, uh, 132 is 128 plus 4. So this is how the exponent is. Okay? Uh, so we said that uh, like uh, the sign bit stores the sign of the number and the exponent can also be positive and negative. So how is that dealt with? That is dealt with uh, by adding this bias value. Okay? So if the exponent is negative, if the actual exponent is negative, say if the actual exponent is minus 100, okay? that is the exponent the actual exponent okay so like we have some number uh, which has uh, where the exponent is this thing uh, we say for example we have this number 1.1011 okay multiplied by 2 raised to the power minus 100 so this is a very small number 
This is a very small number. It is 0 0.0000000. Uh, and in the end, we have 11011. Okay, so it has lots of zeros after the decimal point and then these, these non zero bits. Okay, so this is a very small number. How do we store this exponent? So we add, we first add 127 with it. Okay, and then whatever we get, we store that as the exponent. So the exponent would be 27. Okay, so when we are converting it back, so what we do is we subtract. First we subtract 127 from it, and then we get the real exponent. Okay, so the sign of the exponent, exponent agar positive or negative ho, that is taken care of by using this bias value. Okay, 127 uske saath jama kar diya jata hai. Uh, during conversion from decimal uh, from decimal to binary, the uh, floating point format, hai. and when you are converting it back, we subtract the bias value from it. Okay. Acha. And so this is uh, most significant bit is reserved for the sign. These eight bits are reserved for the exponent. The exponent is a biased exponent, which means that we add one twenty seven to it and then store it. And the remaining part is reserved for storing the mantissa. Okay? The remaining part is reserved for storing the mantissa. And what is the mantissa? So this, uh, like in some books, you will, you will find this whole thing is called the mantissa. 1.1011. This, this whole thing is called the mantissa. So let us call it as the mantissa. In the mantissa, we don't need to store this part. Okay? We don't need to store this one. Why? Because this is always going to be 1. This is always going to be 1. If we have a normalized uh, binary scientific notation, so in that scientific, in normalized binary scientific notation, the first non-zero bit is always going to be 1. So we don't need to store it. In the case of normalized uh, decimal scientific representation, there we have the possibility of having 9 uh, digits, 9 different digits. So then we need to store which digit is here either it is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 or 9 but in binary we have two two bits uh, one is 0 and the other is 1 so we only have one non zero bit in the binary number system so we don't need to store this 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 bit it is always going to be 1 we can on, we should only store this part of it okay? and this part is called the significant this whole part is called the mantissa and this part, which comes after uh, the, the decimal point, it is called the significant. So we just need to store the significant, 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 sorry. Okay? So this, these 23 bits are reserved for storing the significant, significant. This is the fractional part, okay? which is uh, so like we can store uh, a fractional part of up, up to 23 bits this uh, translate into uh, around uh, 7 to 8 digits after the decimal point in in um, in, in in the equivalent decimal number okay so that is why it is called single precision uh, floating point format because uh, the double precision floating for Point format can store more precise values. Again, we discussed it in our earlier classes. It can store numbers with around 16 to 17 digits after the decimal point. Okay, so this is the format. This is how uh, a real value is stored in 32-bit single precision floating point format. Okay, uh, and this is an example of a conversion. So we have the value 63. Uh, in decimal, we converted it into uh, integer, binary integer format. This is how it looks in binary integer format. We have looked at it. Take I don't need to repeat how we, do we get this bit pattern. Uh, then we can convert it into the floating point format. How? The starting point would be this bit representation. We first need to convert it into the normalized uh, binary scientific notation. And this is what it is, the normalized binary scientific notation. Again, we have talked about it in our previous classes. And then we need to find out the values of these different fields, the sign bit, the exponent field, and the fractional part, or the significant. So the sign bit, since this is a positive number, it is going to be 0. The exponent is 5 here. 
we need to add the bias plus 127 it becomes 132 if we convert 132 into an 8-bit value this is how it would look okay so 128 plus 4 is 132 and then we have this the, as the mantissa okay uh, we don't need to store this part of the mantissa we just need to store the significant again we don't need to store the decimal point the exponent basically determines uh, what would be the de where, where would be the position of the decimal point okay so if we populate if we insert these values this is the sign zero says the number is positive the sign bit would be zero this is the exponent 132 in binary and this is the significant so this is how 63 the same number 63 would look like in 32 bit floating point format so this is where we conclude our discussion of floats i hope like you will uh, you would have understood it if you do not just repeat this part of this lecture and listen to it over and over again until it is clear to you okay next we go and we introduce some terms we have maybe talked about these terms but let us formally introduce these terms here okay so you know about a bit a bit is a binary short for binary digit and it has these two possible values one and zero so we have these two bits one and zero okay uh, then uh, one bit is a very it's it can store a very small amount of information okay so we need more bits to store more information so one bit can store only two possible values uh, then we have a nibble a nibble is basically four bits a nibble is basically four bits so four bits are called a group of four bits can be called as a nibble so it can store more information 2 raised to the power 4 uh, or 16 values okay uh, then you know what a byte is a byte is basically 8 bits uh, 8 a group of 8 bits is called a byte uh, it can store 2 raised to the power 8 or 256 uh, different values okay so it can store more a byte can store more information then for the purpose of this course we will uh, introduce another term a word a word is basically 16 bits or 2 bytes so it certainly can store even more information it can store 2 raised to the power 16 or 65536 uh, different values okay so this is what a word can store this these are these many values can be stored in 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 a word okay Acha, then uh, I'll come to this this part of it. Uh, let us first complete. Then we have a double word. A double word is twice a word or double word, which is twice 16 bits or 32 bits or 4 bytes. So it can store 2 raised to the power 32 different values. Okay? And that is around 4 billion. That is around uh, 4 billion more than 4 billion okay it is 4 billion plus values that can be stored uh, in here so this is 4 billion plus values that can be stored using a double word and then we have a quad word quad word means four words or four times 16 which is 64 bits or eight bytes okay so you should you should be aware of these terms uh, I we mentioned that there is another term and this term is a separate term the word size of a microprocessor you can a word size of a microprocessor i guess i mentioned this somewhere in our discussions as well i don't remember it exactly but word size of a microprocessor now what do we mean by the word size of a microprocessor so the word size of a microprocessor basically specifies the the size of the largest value or number that a microprocessor can add or subtract or that the ALU of a microprocessor, the arithmetic and logic unit of a microprocessor can process in a single cycle. Okay, so say this: the the microprocessor that the the laptop that I'm working on has, it is a Core i5. It is a 64-bit microprocessor. That means its word size is 64, which means it can add two 64-bit numbers in a single cycle in one go. Okay. So, in a single cycle, it can add two 64-bit numbers, multiply two 64-bit numbers, subtract two 64-bit numbers. Similarly, uh, perhaps the microprocessor on your smartphones, it is, its word size is 32 bits. Okay? Perhaps that is the case. 
so that means ke the microprocessor on your smartphones it can process 32 bit values it can add subtract and divide 32 bit numbers in a single cycle and we've mentioned uh, use this term single cycle cycle so we will come back to what does this cycle mean okay so uh, then there are some more terms that uh, we want to uh, uh, talk about i mentioned this in our class as well uh, that uh, like uh, the computer software it works in binary the microprocessor it works in binary everything in computer it works in binary uh, and uh, but the, the, there are some industries that have stuck to the uh, although they they are used to like they prepare equipment that is used to store digital data uh, and that is used to transmit digital data but they use the decimal convention okay for example if you buy a hard drive and the hard drive says that it is a one terabyte hard drive okay so what do the hard hard drive manufacturer mean by one terabyte so they mean 10 raised to the power 12 bytes that is what they mean uh, so when you buy a one terabyte hard drive the dry, disk manufacturer uh, it, it calls that hard drive as a one terabyte hard drive but it has that hard drive has the capacity to store 10 raised to the power 12 bytes now when you install this hard drive in your computer and your operating system detects that hard drive so it i need to make these changes uh, okay so we need to keep these so this is a gb gb and this is a tb okay okay so when you connect the same hard drive to your uh, computer so your computer does not show you uh, that it is a one terabyte hard drive the computer perhaps gives you a figure of around 940 gigabytes okay the computer perhaps gives you uh, the size of the hard drive as 940 uh, gigabytes okay and that would be gb's so we we call it gbs we want to differentiate between these two we don't call them we don't want to represent them as tb terabytes okay because these they, they represent two different quantities they represent uh, two different quantities okay <coughs> so the disk drive manufacturers when they say terabyte they mean 10 raised to the power 12 bytes but when your computer your software or the software manufacturers or your operating system designers and manufacturers when they find out the capacity of the same hard drive they find out that capacity to be 940 gigabytes 940 gigabytes and by a gigabyte your computer takes uh, your software thinks that a gigabyte is 2 raised to the power 30 okay now 2 raised to the power 30 is not exactly 10 raised to the power 9 it is not exactly 1 billion this is 1 billion 2 raised to the power 30 is more than 1 billion okay, na? approximately 73 million more than 1 billion 73 bytes million bytes more than uh, 1 billion okay so these are the two things that uh, i want to differentiate between uh, the this convention or scheme is used by the disk manufacturers uh, as well as by the telecom industry we have talked about this okay so if you buy some a telecom equipment and it, it uses these terms mega uh, and uh, giga so by mega they mean 1 million 10 raised to the power 6 they do not mean 2 raised to the power 20 which is more than 1 million similarly by giga they mean 10 raised to the power 9 okay uh, they do not mean 2 raised to the power 30 which is more than 10 raised to the power 9 okay so we need to differentiate between do these two whenever i we write 1 kb it means 1000 bytes and whenever we write 1 kb kib we will read it as kb we mean 1024 bytes which is 2 raised to the power 10 whenever we write 1 mb we will mean 
1 million bytes 10 raised to the power 6 bytes and whenever we re write 1 mb we will mean 2 raised to the power 20 bytes okay similarly the same goes for gb and gb we'll read it as gb and we'll read this one as gb this is mb this is mb uh, this is kb this is kb and similarly this is uh, tb and again this is also tb so i it sounds familiar or similar but when we write it it would be different so you should be aware of these these two terms the difference between these two types of terms okay so that's it now let us uh, resume our discussion of uh, the remaining part of this lecture so we want to talk about today's technology uh, we know that technology is constantly changing and it, and it is changing very rapidly so it is important uh, digital literacy uh, that is uh, being literate with whatever is happening in today's digital technology being aware of it in order to understand it understand it so it involves that we constantly update our understanding uh, and our knowledge of these new devices and technologies that keep on coming okay so digital literacy involves having current knowledge current knowledge up to date knowledge and understanding of computers uh, mobile devices the web and related technologies okay so this course is uh, uh, one of the objectives of this course is like uh, to make you literate about literate about all these uh, or uh, to enhance your digital literacy so let us do that okay so uh, we like uh, we we use all these different types of computers like uh, desktop computers laptops uh, smartphones and tablets so we uh, some many of us or some of us we use all these technologies on a daily basis we come across uh, these devices and softwares and apps like uh, multiple apps and softwares and devices on a daily basis so technology is everywhere in our daily life in our modern life so we need to be aware of it okay uh, we know what a computer is we have defined it uh, you, you 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 know a computer is a data processing machine uh, this is a more for formal uh, definition of that a computer is an electronic device operating under the control of instructions stored in its memory so it has some memory in that memory it has some instructions the computer can uh, uh, understand execute those instructions and what are those instructions for the instructions are, are for processing data so it gets some data as input from the environment it processes it and it produces some output and we have talked about that these inputs and outputs can have different form again we will uh, talk about these things here but do not just think of the input as something that you just type from the keyboard it can be a sensor on your air conditioner okay it can be a temperature sensor on your air conditioner and depending upon the temperature uh, uh, the output that the computer inside your air conditioner can generate may be turning on or off the compressor uh, in order to uh, cool down or heat up things okay so input and output can have different forms depending upon which type of computer you're using and again we have differentiated like we have said that computer is not just your laptop or not just your desktop computers uh, are inside your smartphones they are inside your tablets they are inside your cars they are inside they are embedded inside many devices that we might use from the microwave oven to the air conditioners to the washing machines to the refrigerators all these things they have computers embedded in them this is a laptop again uh, no need to mention it uh, but this is a laptop for those who don't know this is its screen uh, this is the hinge uh, which which connects the screen to the to the to the main body of the laptop in some cases it may be separate uh, uh, the display might be uh, separable from uh, from from this part of the laptop so you can use it as a tablet so this would be a laptop as well as a tablet okay and then this is the keyboard again you know all these things this is a ta tablet for those who don't know what a tablet looks like so it is smaller than a laptop 
uh, it is uh, bigger than uh, uh, a smartphone uh, it is something in between and it caters to different requirements okay so you you don't want to uh, use it as a smartphone but you you want to use it as something more mobile than the laptop and the desktop the desktop certainly is fixed the desktop computer is fixed on a uh, at a particular location okay the laptop is more mobile mobile you can move it around take it around but this thing is uh, it gives you more mobility than than the laptop okay uh, it certainly does this is uh, these are some desktop computers this is this is a typical desktop computer that you might have seen in your computer labs or uh, any other place uh, here this is the CPU it comes separately uh, this is the display it displays separate and these are the keyboard and mouse they come separately and these appear to be wireless keyboard and wireless mouse so this case is case this is the casing this is the casing of the CPU this is what you this is this is what houses the cpu this is where the cpu lives in all the hardware and devices storage devices and everything lives here now this is a tower casing tower so this is a tower casing it is vertical vertical direction means key height height this is a tower casing you can also have a computer desktop computer that is like all in one so it is just this is display and the display holds the motherboard and the microprocessor and the uh, solid state hard drive or maybe the other normal mecha electromechanical hard drive so everything is inside the inside this thing so this is an all in one desktop but it is nevertheless a desktop computer it is supposed to stay at some place and not move around okay Acha ji, uh, I hope you are aware with these terminologies as well. Uh, now that we mostly interact with touch screens, okay, so whether it is our smartphone or the tablet uh, and modern laptops, so all of them have these uh, touch screens. And whenever you are interacting with a touch screen, you interact it with it using hand gestures, okay. So, what is a gesture? A gesture is a motion that you make on a touch screen with the tip of your your fingers okay with the tip of your fingers you make a motion that is uh, a gesture so i hope you are aware of these terms tap so you tap the, you can tap the screen quickly touch and release one finger one time okay so this is uh, this is called tap a double tap so quickly touch and release one finger two times press and hold okay so i hope like you are aware of these terms these are not like this is not rocket science these are simple uh, you can drag or slide things, you can swipe across the screen uh, and you can pinch and do all those movements. Okay? So these are standard movement, but you should be aware of these terms and you should know how you can interact with the touch screen. Then um, uh, again, uh, talking about computers uh, and technology in our daily lives, uh, we we you may also come across these uh, uh, these these uh, different other devices uh, for example uh, most of you might have might own a smartphone some of you might own digital cameras uh, portable uh, digital media player I, i'm not sure whether you own it or not but you must have heard the name ipod or other d media players that that uh, that ma must be available in the market and then we have these ebook readers you must have you might have heard about the name of kindle so kindle is just like a tab uh, you can think of it as a tab but it is uh, cheaper than a tab uh, maybe less powerful in terms of computing power uh, than the tab because it it has one specific purpose it is uh, an ebook reader okay so it is used for uh, reading ebooks uh, electronic books ebook mean electronic books and then um, there are wearable devices uh, that have some sort of a computer inside of them and we also use such devices um, in a, many many people might be using these devices in in our daily lives and then uh, there there are game consoles that some of you might be using so why are we talking about all these devices so this is this is all the modern technology uh, or devices that have some sort of a computer inside them that we are constantly interacting with okay 
So that's why these are just examples. Again, we don't need to talk uh, at length about these devices, but these are just examples. So you know smartphones. This this is Samsung Galaxy or some of uh, one of its siblings, uh, one version of the Galaxy phone or some version of the Galaxy phone. So it is a smartphone. It has a touch screen, an on-screen keyboard. Okay, it does not have a physical keyboard. It has an on-screen keyboard, and then you can use those taps and uh, double taps and pinches and swipes and all those things uh, so you can interact with it using all those things uh, this is another uh, smartphone uh, it has a slide out keyboard so this is a keyboard that can slide out and in uh, of the smartphone so you can uh, use the keyboard if you want to type something uh, this is a digital camera again uh, a digital device it generates digital images uh, and uh, you can view those images using uh, a screen that comes with the camera and you can keep that image or discard it and get another one okay so again this is an example of uh, a digital device that captures digital data that processes digital data it has very powerful uh, processors uh, installed in this in this uh, camera okay so it's, it's not just a camera it is a full fledged uh, digital image processing platform you can play around with those images and do different things uh, then again you you're aware of uh, these uh, portable media players this is this is how an ipod looks this is certainly uh, it looks uh, similar to the to the modern iphone uh, it, it comes with these uh, earbuds uh, and it can be connected to uh, digital media platforms where you can listen to or watch videos or download or stream media. Okay? So stream media means you can listen to live media. Uh, it is not stored locally. It is downloaded and played all at the same time. Okay. So that is how that is what streaming means. You down you 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 do not download and save it. You just download it and play it on the fly. Okay. <clears throat> so there is no saving. There may be some local buffering. The media player uh, might uh, download some part of the media, buffer it, and then start playing it. Okay. So the buffering is done to give you uh, a jitter-free uh, uh, or a delay-free uh, experience. So you do not experience any uh, any mm, jitter in your video or any uh, stoppages in your audio. Okay? There are no breaks. So they, they, they may use it for this. But in any case, like these devices, they are not just, uh, they do not just like uh, uh, play local music that is stored on these devices. Okay. These devices come with memory. Some come with a hard drive, uh, so you can you can store uh, hundreds of GBs of music or video on these devices. They can also be connected to the internet. Okay, uh, so they have uh, their own operating system, uh, and using that operating system, they can connect. Like they they give you full full functionality uh, to connect to different uh, media platforms. This is an ebook reader. It is, I guess, image of a Kindle. A Kindle. Kindle was introduced by Amazon. So I hope you have heard the name Amazon. It is uh, an e-commerce website where people uh, basically buy and sell things. Okay. So Amazon wanted to uh, sell their ebooks and sell them well. So they introduce uh, introduce this very nice platform that can be used for reading ebooks okay so you can read ebooks you can purchase the ebooks via kindle and read them and store them and so this if 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 there's a person who is interested in reading so this is a good thing for that kind of person okay uh, then we have these wearable devices. These are all wearable devices okay so these are all mostly fitness devices so you can wear this, for example, there is a company, Titbit, uh, Fitbit, sorry, I am sorry, Fitbit, 
uh, tidbit is uh, uh, i guess it is uh, it is uh, it is a uh, an english word that it means something tidbits uh, this is fitbit i guess fitbit is a company uh, and it is a very it is very popular in north america and europe and they make these wearable devices and these wearable devices basically track your activity and they can do all those things then uh, smart watches again they, these are wearable uh, samsung uh, provides smart watches apple introduces introduce introduce smart watches with their phones so they can they are, they can connect to your phone they can monitor your physical activity then there are apps that that those apps can the, the apps would be on your phone and these uh, uh, wearable devices will give data to that app and if there is something to worry about the app may be connected to your doctor and all these things so this is all technology in action then smart glasses i guess google introduced the idea there was a google smart glass project so the idea was that you would wear this smart glass and you would be able to make calls video calls you would be able to uh, look at things and know about those things and it would be like uh, there would be this augmented reality kind of thing and all these things put together so it would have been a very powerful add-on or wearable so it would be a wearable you would wear these glasses and you would have all the technology right in front of your eye okay but due to privacy and other concerns i guess it it was uh, it could not be uh, it was not allowed to go into production and all that the project was somehow i guess it was uh, abandoned uh, these are game consoles people who are into games they must have heard of the uh, they, they must have heard the names of playstation and xbox and nintendo v so you buy a playstation uh, a game console and you connect it to a tv and you have these joysticks and these uh, um, these devices that can be used to uh, give input to the game console and you can play these games okay now some game consoles uh, they they can be handheld like they are small this one is big it has a hard drive it is quite heavy it has very powerful processors uh, so this is this is a very expensive uh, thing okay and it is connected to a tv you cannot like move it move around with it and this thing is a handheld gaming devices so i guess uh, some preliminary handheld devices uh, like when we were kids there were small video games uh, that you could buy and you could play uh, with so this is uh, not like that it it looks pretty advanced but nevertheless it is a handheld gaming device okay uh, similarly, your smartphones, the smartphones that you have nowadays, so they are also, uh, they can be used as gaming devices. In fact, they are used as gaming devices. So I'm not sure, like your generation, uh, there's a game called PUBG. It is very popular among many in your generations. And you can play that game using a smartphone, a mobile phone as well. In fact, that is how most people play it okay so like i hope you are aware of these things now, this is just an introduction like this is these are the uh, computing devices that you are constantly interacting with on a daily basis and you know how to obtain games and apps so if you are using your smartphone or tablets so you can go to the app store or google play and from there you can download uh, you can download games uh, okay for game consoles yeah playstation and all those things so they come with some pre-installed games and then you can download new games for them or buy new games for them on dvds or rent them out new games for them so this is how you you can do that and then these things they come up with more accessories okay so for example the nintendo v like uh, using that you can play uh, tennis or other games golf like physically so you have an accessory you have something tied to your hand and you make uh, movements with your hand and then something happens so these accessories they not only give you uh, a real uh, like experience of the game they also help you exercise okay so 
I hope like these are easy. Then there are appliances, smart appliances. Uh, we may not have a lot of them in our homes, but they are coming. Okay, so there, 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 there can be dishwashers uh, that can be programmed to run at non-peak electrical times. Okay, so right now, I guess most of uh, in big cities, these uh, distribution companies they have introduced this uh, time of day uh, uh, kind of billing. So you you are charged different uh, differently for electricity depending upon what time of the day you are using that electricity. So in in the peak hours, okay. For example, the peak demand it is in uh, from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. at night. Say for example. So if you are using electricity uh, from 6 p.m. in the evening to 10 p.m. in the evening, then you will be charged more money. Okay, you will be charged a higher rate and if uh, you uh, do not use uh, uh, power in that time and you use most of your power in off peak hours like after 10 p.m. Uh, the load may may decrease. So then if you use uh, electricity after 10 p.m. you will be charged a slightly lesser uh, rate you will be charged according to that rate. So, uh, in countries where that is the case, so you can program your electrical appliances to work, especially those electrical appliances that you don't need to work all the time, like you dish, you don't need to wash dishes all the time. So, you can fill up the dishwasher and you can program it to wash those dishes and dry them after, say, 12 a.m. Okay, so you'll be charged less. Similarly, you can program coffee makers so that your coffee is ready uh, as soon as you wake up or as soon as you are about to leave for your office uh, and you it, they can be shut off if uh, it is overheated okay similarly uh, smart refrigerators uh, they can keep track of uh, the things that are missing for example if t tomatoes are finished or if uh, radishes are finished and you want them so, or bread is finished or butter is finished. So, they can look around in the refrigerator and they can use image processing and they can find out which process, which things are missing and they can generate shopping list for you. Okay, we need these, 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 such and such things for, 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 for the for home. And then, uh, I, I'm not sure, uh, many times, uh, like non, non, normally, uh, nowadays, many people are using these CCTV cameras, okay. So, and most of these CCTV cameras, they come, come, come with an app and that app is installed on your phone and you can connect to your CCTV system on your phone and you can like uh, check all the cameras. Like you can check, you, you might be at your office or at, un at your university and using your smartphone, you can check like what is going around in your house. And if the system is a little more expensive, like you can include surveillance into it, you can set up alarms if if there is, if you want to detect whether some some person has intruded into your house or something like that, so they can they, that can set up an, an alarm. And all these things are real. This is like happening. It is not something uh, that is conceptual. These technologies are available and people are using these technologies. And all of this is possible because of computing and connectivity. Okay. Similarly, like in the future, uh, I guess you might have heard of the term the Internet of Things. Uh, Internet of Things, IoT. Okay, so this is a buzzword nowadays. Uh, Internet of Things. Okay. Now, the Internet of Things means that before, like, the, con the concept was that only computers are connected to the Internet, okay? But nowadays, it's not just the computer. Nowadays, like, everything is connected to the Internet. So, your smartwatch, it is also connected to your Internet. And through that, it may be connected to your doctor as well. For example, if you're an elderly person who has some precondition or something like that. So, it may be so. Uh, your uh, air conditioning, it may be connected to the internet or for example, if you are leaving for your home and you want to sleep immediately and you want your room to be uh, cold for you, like uh, comfortable before you get there. So you can 
turn on your in, uh, your air conditioner uh, when when you leave office and by the time you get to your home the room will be nice and cozy and you can sleep again like uh, since we are living we are in pakistan and we have sort of different problems uh, first problem is the availability of power so all these things are uh, are being done like these these appliances and everything this is available people people use them uh, these will these will be available in pakistan as well but uh, if whether you can use these that effectively or not that again depends upon the very fundamentals the fundamentals are that there should be power and there should be internet connectivity now you uh, you might also consider here if you have such access to your devices and appliances okay your air conditioner is connected to the internet your refrigerator is connected to the internet and everything is connected to the internet you can access it now there is uh, you have convenience aapko aasani mili hai but there is a risk as well somebody else if if that person gets an access to your home your appliances your devices so that is a risk a security issue theek hai na तो ये इश्यूज भी फिर इम्पॉर्टेंट हैं डिजिटल डिवाइसेस और टेक्नोलॉजी उसमें फिर सिक्योरिटी इज आल्सो एन इम्पॉर्टेंट कंसर्न व्हिच वील टॉक अबाउट लेटर एंड अगेन वी हैव टॉक्ड अबाउट व्हाट कंप्यूटर्स डू व्हाट इज डेटा प्रोसेसिंग ठीक है सो दिस इज अ कॉमन एग्जाम्पल दैट यू कम अक्रॉस इन एनी गुड store nowadays when you go there you buy things and there is the the cashier at the counter so the cashier basically picks up your items and passes them through a barcode scanner the barcode scanner scans the barcode uh, extracts ki ye hai kya cheez and then it extracts its price from the database database hota hai us computer ke andar wahan se uski price uthata hai theek hai और वो सारी चीज़ों की प्राइस उससे वो आपको एक लिस्ट जनरेट करके देता है जो आपने ख़रीदी है ठीक है चीज़ें और उसकी टोटल जो मनी बनती है जो पैसे बनते हैं फिर जो पैसे आप उसको देते हैं और फिर उसमें से जितना आपका चेंज बनता है सो दिस इज़ ऑल द डेटा ठीक है एक एक चीज़ वो उठाता है और उसको वो एंटर किया जाता है और उसकी कीमत ऑटोमेटिकली आपका कंप्यूटर उठाता जाता है और सम मालूम करता है फिर आप उसे पैसे देते हैं ठीक है और वो उसमें आपका डिफ्रेंस कैलकुलेट करता है ये सारी Uh, ye sara you provide this data the data is stored and processed by the computer and uh, in the end it gives you this information in the form of this receipt uh, jisme all the things that you have wo oh, they are listed their prices are listed kisi cheez pe agar discount hai wo listed hai aapka total amount due jitna banta hai jitna aapne pay kiya jitna change banta hai advance receipts mein jitni us pe sales tax hai jitna us pe agar withholding tax hai to all that information would be available there this is data processing i guess we have talked about it in a lot more detail but in any case like you can uh, you can have this slide as well so you know uh, we know what data and information are we have differentiated between these two two terms theek hai to yahan hum kuch input devices ke bare mein uh de uh, baat karenge theek hai so how do we enter data Uh, how is data provided to the computer so one mechanism is using keyboards so keyboards are come with desktops and laptops and your phones us usme unme bhi keyboards hote hain it's not a physical keyboard it's a virtual keyboard on screen on screen keyboard jo ki aapko nazar aa jata hai jaise ye so this is an example of an on screen keyboard uh, similarly uh, if you remember the old phones they come up with a mini keyboard okay so it's not a Uh, here like every key corresponds to more than one character or you can have a virtual keyboard so this keyboard does not exist physically theek hai ye this is these are this is uh, laser light or uh, so using these lights and image processing so this is kind of virtual keyboard that they have but this is how you provide data theek hai so computer are data processing machines uh and this is one way of uh, providing data to that computer using keyboards and you we have different types of keyboards then we can also provide input or uh, data to our computer using a mouse a mouse or any other pointing device these are pointing devices a mouse is a pointing device and the touchpad on your computer it is also a pointing device theek hai so pointing device kya karta hai 
तो आपकी स्क्रीन पे एक सिंबल उसको उसको मूव कराता है उसकी लोकेशन आपको बताता है यूं समझ लें अ पॉइंटिंग डिवाइस इज एन इनपुट डिवाइस दैट अलाउज अ यूजर टू कंट्रोल यानी उसको कंट्रोल करवाता है अ स्मॉल सिंबल ऑन अ स्क्रीन इट इज कॉल्ड पॉइंटर सो दिस इज अ पॉइंटर राइट नाउ ठीक है ये पॉइंटर को मैं मूव करवा रहा हूं ठीक है एंड आई एम यूजिंग दिस पॉइंटर एज अ पेन राइट नाउ ठीक है सो इफ इट इज मूविंग और मैंने यहाँ पे ये ये वाला बटन अपने टच uh, पैड का अगर प्रेस किया हुआ है ठीक है सो आई हैव प्रेस दिस बटन एंड आई एम मूविंग माय फिंगर ऑन द टच पैड एंड दैट इज कंट्रोलिंग द मूवमेंट एंड बिहेवियर ऑफ दिस पॉइंटर ठीक है सो आई एम यूजिंग इट टू राइट समथिंग और ड्रॉ समथिंग ऑन द स्क्रीन एंड सिमिलर दिस इज माउस माउस हैज दिस बटन दिस इज द लेफ्ट माउस बटन दिस इज द राइट माउस बटन इफ यू प्रेस दिस वन यू इज इज कॉल्ड द क्लिक इफ यू प्रेस दिस वन दिस इज कॉल्ड द राइट क्लिक दिस इज द व्हील व्हील ऑफ द माउस सो यू कैन यूज इट फॉर स्क्रोलिंग सो आई होप लाइक यू आर अवेयर ऑफ दिस टीम दिस थिंग्स अच्छा सम मोबाइल डिवाइसेस एंड कंप्यूटर्स दे इनेबल यू टू स्पीक डेटा इंस्ट्रक्शंस डायरेक्टली आप वॉइस इनपुट भी दे सकते हैं फॉर एग्जांपल ऑन योर स्मार्टफोन्स एंड्राइड स्मार्टफोन्स Uh, we have uh, Google Assistant, ठीक है तो I hope like you know about Google Assistant. Uh, I guess uh, Samsung introduced uh, uh, their assistant. What was uh, its name? I I am forgetting. अच्छा let us let us uh, use those. One is Google's Assistant. So Google Assistant can be used to give voice instructions. Uh, then we have Apple's Siri. I hope you know what Siri is. So Siri is also an assistant. Uska naam hai. Theek hai. It's, it's basically a software. So you can give voice instructions to this software, Siri. And uh, Samsung also introduced uh, Bixby. I guess Samsung introduced its uh, this the uh, Samsung the intelligent assistant that Samsung. Uh, uh introduced i guess it was bixby i i don't remember it clearly but i guess it was bixby so bixby was also like you could give it voice commands and all that so this is this is another way of giving input like uh, you can call ask siri to dial a particular number okay so you can say siri call home so siri will uh, go to your contacts find the contact home and dial that number for you okay so this is what voice instruction means again uh, this is what you can do with the mouse uh, point uh, so what does that mean click what does that mean right click double click drag so i hope like you know you are aware of uh, these things these actions you can do these things with the mouse and this is this is how they are defined like uh, if you want to know precisely what they are so these are basically uh, those uh, uh, those other uh, things that we called about like you you can give uh, verbal instructions to your software uh, and you can give that using a wireless headset you can uh, make voice calls okay so uh, here uh, here this uh, in this in this figure uh what we are showing is uh, a video call using a computer so here the input comes from the webcam as well as the mic okay so you are providing two types of input and it is two way traffic so it is coming to you and it is going towards the other party as well so this is all these different types of information and different types of data that you provide to the computer using different devices okay similarly uh, we can have and we have another uh, device that can be used to provide input to a computer this is a scanner uh, it it can be used to scan documents or images okay so a scanner is basically a light sensing input device that converts printed text and images into form the computer can process so it digitizes these images so kya hota hai niche se ek white light aati hai और वो वाइट लाइट फिर इन ऑब्जेक्ट्स से रिफ्लेक्ट होती है एंड द रिफ्लेक्टेड लाइट इज देन डिजिटाइज इट इज कन्वर्टेड इनटू डिजिटल फॉर्मेट ठीक है या डिजिटल इमेज एंड दैट इमेज इज देन स्टोर्ड ऑन द कंप्यूटर प्रोसेस ऑन द कंप्यूटर और वट अच्छा जी सो वंस द कंप्यूटर प्रोसेस द डेटा जो उसको हम प्रोवाइड करते हैं यूजिंग इनपुट 
then that data is presented uh, on the output to phir wo output pe hum milta hai output pe hum kisi bhi bahut sari there are plenty of output devices theek hai an output device is any hardware component that conveys information from a computer or mobile device to one or more people so computer ne ab output dikhani hai logon ko ya user ko so uske liye output devices use hoti hain उसकी बहुत सारी एग्जांपल्स हैं वन इज द मोस्ट कॉमन एग्जांपल जो हम देते हैं दैट इज द प्रिंटर ठीक है सो अ प्रिंटर इज एन आउटपुट डिवाइस दैट प्रोड्यूस टेक्स्ट एंड ग्राफिक्स ऑन अ फिजिकल मीडियम तो कागज पे या प्लास्टिक पे या किसी और मटेरियल पे वी कैन क्रिएट ग्राफिक इंफॉर्मेशन सो वो टेक्स्ट भी हो सकता है ग्राफिक्स भी हो सकता है देन वी हैव अ स्पेशल टाइप ऑफ प्रिंटर कॉल्ड अ थ्री प्रिंटर एंड अ थ्री प्रिंटर Uh, it can be used to print solid objects, ठीक है तो आप solid objects जो है ना उस पर बना सकते हैं Those can be toys, parts, implants, prototypes, prosthetics, anything जिसको वैसे बनाना factory में बड़ा लंबा चौड़ा काम होगा उस पर time लगेगा या पैसे लगेंगे but you want a prototype, so you can use a 3D printer for that, प्रिंटर फॉर दैट ठीक है अच्छा सो लेट इज लुक एट समर आउटपुट डिवाइस ठीक है दिस इज अ नॉर्मल प्रिंटर Uh, so it can print photos it can print text this is normal printer this is a 3d printer 3d printer jo hai na wo aapko 3d objects print karke deta hai theek kaise print karta hai that is something else like you can always find out information ye kaise karta hai maybe i'm not sure maybe your department has a 3d printer as well and at some stage maybe aapko wo dikha de ki wo kaise kaam karta hai or you might be able to use it but 3d printers are used for printing uh, 3d objects or now the technology of 3d printers like it has it has enhanced a lot 3d printers can be used for printing houses theek hai ghar banane ke liye bhi istemal hota hai for printing food burger banane ke liye bhi uh, log istemal karte hain 3d printer ko so technology can be funny so 3d printers are a uh, very um, powerful output device देन अगेन डिस्प्ले ये तो बहुत ही कॉमन आउटपुट डिवाइस है इस पर आप इमेज और वीडियोज एंड ऑल दोज काइंड ऑफ टेक्सट आउटपुट वो इन्फॉर्मेशन आप देख सकते हैं सो यू कैन हैव स्मार्टफोन डिस्प्लेज डिजिटल कैमरा में भी डिस्प्लेज होते हैं टेबलेट्स डिस्प्ले लैपटॉप के मॉनिटर डिस्प्लेज सो देयर साइज इज वेरी अपॉन एंड देयर क्वालिटी वेरी अपॉन द टाइप ऑफ डिवाइस दट यू आर यूजिंग ठीक है सो स्मार्टफोन पर बड़ी अला क्वालिटी का डिस्प्ले होगा हाई रेजोल्यूशन होगा डिजिटल कैमरा में भी इतना ना हो ठीक है क्योंकि दैट इज नॉट द प्राइमरी पर्पज ऑफ द डिस्प्ले देर अच्छा सिमिलरली स्पीकर ऑडियो को सुनने के लिए ऑडियो आउटपुट को सुनने के लिए यू यूज स्पीकर और हेडफोन्स जहाँ पे आप स्पीकर नहीं यूज कर सकते और लोग डिस्टर्ब होंगे तो देर यू यूज हेडफोन्स अगेन दीज आर आउटपुट डिवाइस विच यू नो ऑफ तो आपको मैंने पहले भी बताया था कि आउटपुट इज नॉट नेसेसरली इन दीज टर्म्स तो आउटपुट कैन बी इन एनी अदर फॉर्म इज वेल और उसमें मैंने आपको एग्जांपल दी थी इनपुट और आउटपुट की कि इनपुट मे नॉट नेसेसरली कम फ्रॉम अ माइक और कम फ्रॉम अ कीबोर्ड इनपुट मे कम फ्रॉम अ टेम्परेचर सेंसर और अ प्रेशर सेंसर एंड आउटपुट मे नॉट नेसेसरली बी ऑन द स्क्रीन और ऑन द स्पीकर इट मे बी ऑन इन टर्म्स ऑफ एक्चुएशन कि अचानक जी फैन चल पड़ा ठीक है तो अगर फर्ज किया इफ इफ यू हैव अ ह्यूमिडिटी सेंसर इन योर रूम और आप अपने कमरे में एक खास अमाउंट ऑफ ह्यूमिडिटी मेंटेन करना चाहते हैं ठीक है सो अब अगर ह्यूमिडिटी सेंसर ने सेंस किया कि ह्यूमिडिटी हैज़ इंक्रीज नमी कमरे में बढ़ गई है सो वट शुड इट डू इट शुड इंक्रीज द सर्कुलेशन ऑफ एयर एंड हाउ डज इट डू इट इट विल टर्न ऑन द एग्जॉस्ट फैन तो इनपुट यहाँ पर फिर होगी रीडिंग फ्राम द्यूमिडिटी सेंसर और आउटपुट वुड बी द एक्शन जिसमें आपने एग्जॉस्ट फैन को यू टर्न इट ऑन दैट वुड बी द आउटपुट ऑफ दैट कंप्यूटर जो कि मॉनिटर कर रहा है सिचुएशन को अच्छा सो डेटा और इंफॉर्मेशन जो भी हो जब आपका कंप्यूटर आप उसको डेटा प्रोवाइड करते हैं और वो जब उसको प्रोसेस करके इंफॉर्मेशन जनरेट करता है बोथ दीज थिंग्स एंड द इंस्ट्रक्शन यूज टू डू दिस प्रोसेसिंग दे नीड टू बी स्टोर इन मेमरी ठीक है सो मेमरी जो है इट कंसिस्ट ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉनिक कंपोनेंट्स जो कि विच कैन स्टोर बोथ इंस्ट्रक्शन जिसको जिन्होंने एग्जीक्यूट होना है एंड द डेटा नीडेड बाई दोज इंस्ट्रक्शन 
जिस डेटा को आपने प्रोसेस करना है और जिन इंस्ट्रक्शन ने उन डेट उस डेटा पे काम करना है दे दे आर स्टोर्ड इन द मेमरी ठीक है और वंस द प्रोसेसिंग इज डन द इन्फॉर्मेशन दैट इज जनरेटेड सो दैट इज ऑल्सो स्टोर्ड इन मेमरी ठीक है कंप्यूटर कीप्स डेटा इंस्ट्रक्शन एंड इन्फॉर्मेशन ऑन स्टोरेज मीडिया ये तमाम चीजें स्टोरेज मीडिया पे स्टोर होती हैं स्टोरेज मीडिया ठीक है अ स्टोरेज डिवाइस रिकॉर्ड्स राइट्स एंड और रिट्रीव रीड आइटम्स टू एंड फ्रॉम स्टोरेज मीडिया स्टोरेज डिवाइस जो है स्टोरेज मीडिया से सो स्टोरेज मीडिया इज द एक्चुअल थिंग जिसपे इंफॉर्मेशन स्टोर होती है वी हैव टॉक्ट अबाउट दिस अगेन इन अलॉट ऑफ डिटेल सो वी सेट के वी हैव रैम वो एक स्टोरेज मीडिया है वी हैव हार्ड डिस्क ड्राइव वो एक मैग्नेटिक स्टोरेज मीडिया है उस पर डेटा स्टोर होता है इन द फॉर्म ऑफ मैग्नेटिक फील्ड्स तो उसमें आपके पास डिस्क होती हैं मैग्नेटिक डिस्क मैग्नेटिक कोडेड डिस्क होती हैं उस पर सो दैट इन द इन द केस ऑफ हार्ड ड्राइव द स्टोरेज मीडिया इज मैग्नेटिकली कोटेड मेटेलिक डिस्क देन वी हैव ऑप्टिकल मीडिया तो वहाँ पर आपका जो मीडिया है दैट इज एन ऑप्टिकल डिस्क ठीक है जिस पे रिफ्लेक्टिव मटीरियल होता है एंड यू क्रिएट पिट्स एंड पिट्स ऑन दैट ऑन द सर्फेस ऑफ दैट मीडिया टू स्टोर बिट्स ठीक है और स्टोरेज डिवाइस क्या करता है वो इस मीडिया को एक्सेस करता है फॉर स्टोरिंग डेटा एंड रिट्रीविंग डेटा ठीक है तो हार्ड ड्राइव में आपका एक तो वो मीडिया होता है वो डिस्क होती है प्लेट्स होती हैं जिस पे डेटा स्टोर होता है फिर उसके साथ वो नेसेसरी इलेक्ट्रॉनिक सर्किटरी होती है इलेक्ट्रोमैकेनिकल सर्किटरी एंड इलेक्ट्रॉनिक सर्किटरी जो कि उस डेटा को राइट और रीड करने के लिए इस्तेमाल होता है सो लेट्स लुक एट सम ऑफ दीज एग्जाम्पल्स सो वी टॉक अबाउट द हार्ड ड्राइव आपके कंप्यूटर लैपटॉप में डेस्कटॉप में दीज हार्ड ड्राइव आर देयर सो दिस इज द मीडिया ऑफ द हार्ड ड्राइव ये वो मेटेलिक डिस्क हैं बिल्कुल शाइनिंग किस्म की डिस्क होंगी सो दीज आर दो डिस्क जिन पे डेटा स्टोर होता है इन द फॉर्म ऑफ मैग्नेटिक फील्ड क्लाक वाइज मैग्नेटिक फील्ड या एंटी क्लाक वाइज मैग्नेटिक फील्ड दिस इज द रीड राइट हेड आई होप आप इसको देख सकते हैं तो ये डिस्क दीज डिस्क आर मूव एट वेरी हाई स्पीड ठीक है फाइव थाउजेंड फोर हंड्रेड रेवोल्यूशन पर मिनट और सेवन थाउजेंड टू हंड्रेड रेवोल्यूशन पर मिनट और मे बी टेन थाउजेंड रेवोल्यूशन पर मिनट So typically, uh, the speed is around 5,400 revolutions per minute. So these disks are moving at that speed, and this read-write head it moves uh, radially, uh, kind of radially uh, along the surface of this disk. So ye is disk se phir data read karta hai ya write karta hai. So this is a hard drive. This is a solid-state or SSD hard drive. Now solid-state hard drive does not have any moving part. This has a moving part. Ye jo disk hai na. इधर मूविंग यहाँ पे ये मोटर लगी हुई है और ये मोटर इस डिस्क को मूव कराती है सो दिस इज एन इलेक्ट्रो मैकेनिकल डिवाइस ठीक है जो चीज इलेक्ट्रो मैकेनिकल होती है चांसेस आर के विद टाइम उसमें खराबी आ सकती है ठीक है एंड इट कंज्यूम्स मोर एनर्जी और इसकी स्पीड भी चूंकि दिस इज इलेक्ट्रो मैकेनिकल सो इट इट स्पीड इज डिपेंडेंट अपॉन द मैकेनिकल स्पीड ठीक है तो फाइव थाउजेंड फोर हंड्रेड रेवोल्यूशन पर मिनट अगर इसकी स्पीड है तो इसका डेटा ट्रांसफर स्लो होगा बन इस सात हजार दो सौ रेवोल्यूशन पर मिनट आर पी एम वाली डिस्क के ठीक है सो सो दिस इज रेलेटिवली स्लो दिस इज एन इलेक्ट्रॉनिक डिस्क ड्राइव दिस इज सॉलिड स्टेट डिस्क ड्राइव सॉलिड स्टेट मीन्स के इट यूज इज सेमी कंडक्टर टेक्नोलॉजी टू स्टोर डेटा ठीक है अ प्रिसाइजली विच टेक्नोलॉजी दैट इज अटल डिफरेंट ठीक है वी आर नॉट गोइंग टू डिटेल्स केस में मेमरी सेल का स्ट्रक्चर क्या होगा but it uses solid state or semiconductor technology so it is relatively faster than this 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 drive but more expensive theek hai ye zyada expensive hai acha ji so similarly we can have external hard drive so external hard drive is a stand alone hard drive it is not like it can be connected to any computer and it can be used to store or backup data uske liye use ho sakta hai acha we also you might have uh, like you should be aware of usb flash drive again this is a solid state drive semiconductor based uh, memory device you can connect, connect it to the universal serial bus usb stands for universal serial bus so this is a port uh, an input output port theek hai na port means uh, um, a place on your computer where you can connect एन इनपुट और आउटपुट डिवाइस ठीक है सो दिस इज यूनिवर्सल सीरियल बस एंड दिस फ्लैश ड्राइव इट यूज द फ्लैश टेक्नोलॉजी टू स्टोर डेटा इट इज अगेन अ सेमी कंडक्टर टेक्नोलॉजी 
and you can connect this drive to your USB port and store data and all that. Okay. Similarly, we can use memory cards. Memory cards are extensively used in cameras, uh, especially digital cameras and phones uh, as uh, storage devices. You can also connect it to your computer. Okay. So memory cards are also there. They are uh, semiconductor memory devices. They are semiconductor devices. Okay. So they use uh, semiconductor. Semiconductor ka jahan pe bhi naam aaye na to think of silicon. Theek hai. So these are devices based upon silicon which are used to store this data. And then we talked about uh, optical disc as well. So this is optical disc. It is. It can be a CD or a DVD. CD is compact disc. DVD is a digital versatile disc. And we talked about ke uh, is pe bits kaise store hote hain. Theek hai. So it has this reflectory surface and the bits are stored in the form of pits and uh, no pits on its surface. So uh, light is reflected differently. These are optical devices. So it uses light to read for reading information and storing information. Lasers use information to read right. So light is reflected differently from a pit and from a flat surface. Okay. So that is why they are optical disks or ye is tarike kar ko use karte hain for storing data then other storage that you can use is cloud storage theek hai what does cloud storage mean so most of you have uh, a google account a google gmail account theek hai and google gives you a uh, google drive in google drive you can store around 15 gb of your data theek hai to all your emails all your attachments uh, uh all these things like they 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 you have 15 gigabytes to store all that similarly if you have a uh one live account or hotmail account so microsoft it gives you uh, some space on its one drive microsoft also uh, provides you free cloud storage now this is cloud storage okay, no? cloud storage or cloud computing so this is a different form of uh, computing. Okay. Uh, you understand that these big companies uh, or any company, for example, this is also a company, JustCloud.com. You can use it for storing your data, or you can. But this this does not provide you free free storage. You have to buy some package and then use. Uh, you have to pay money in order to use their storage. So you understand that they have created this this huge. Uh, uh, server form or yani inke paas ek server form inhone banaya hua server form means it has uh, hundreds of thousands of servers servers are powerful computers theek hai very powerful computers and they have uh, uh, huge amounts of storage spaces and they don't just have one server they have thousands of servers in a server form theek hai so they have server forms so they give you some space on on that server form so you can this server form is connected to the internet so and they give you an interface aapko ye ek web interface de dete hain interface means ke uh, you have uh, some mechanism to communicate with with this server form jaise aapka google drive ka interface hai so you type drive.google.com into your web browser you log in with your account and then you are given an interface. So, wahan pe aapke Google Drive mein jo bhi aapke folders maujood hain, you can view those folders, you can create new folders, you can upload files or folders into your Google Drive. And the beauty of it is that you can access uh, your Google Drive from anywhere across the world. Aap kahin pe bhi hon, to aap usko access kar sakte hain. So, that is the purpose of the cloud. Theek hai? So, cloud is that uh, you understand that you are in the clouds. Cloud is it is called cloud because it is not visible to you. Okay, just that a badal me chizhe chupi hoti hain. So whatever happens on the cloud and however it happens, it is not visible or transparent to you. You you are just provided with an interface and you use that interface to store your data and uh, access uh, those cloud services. Okay. So we will talk about cloud a little more in, in the coming lectures, but you can also use cloud for storage. There are some free services like Google Drive, uh, like uh, Microsoft's OneDrive, 
like uh, 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 which which is the other one? Uh, I I I am forgetting some names here, uh, but there are uh, like uh, free cloud storage services, and then there are paid services as well. So usually individuals they may use those free cloud services. Similarly, Apple, if those people who are using iPhones, so they know that they have uh, uh, some cloud storage available given to, given to them for their device by Apple. So you can store or back up your images on your Apple phone, on your cloud and all that. Those who are using Samsung's phones, so Samsung also provides free cloud storage, some free cloud storage to their uh, users where you can back up your phone's data and if you lose your phone, you can always recover that data. Okay? So cloud is an important, cloud storage is an important uh, storage facility that we have and we should be aware of. Okay, so digital versatile disk, again, we can store it and we, we need a DVD drive to read data of it. And uh, uh, if a DVD, digital versatile disk is recordable, that means we can record data onto it or write data onto it. Okay. So again, this is simple. Uh, this is the example of uh, one cloud storage solution, just cloud.com, but this is a paid service. Uh, it's not for individuals, maybe businesses or uh, they can go for paid cloud services. Again, this is not the only one. There are uh, many others as well. So it's also a good business. But in, in cloud storage, like you should always remember that your data is not with you. It's with the, uh, with the company. It's stored on their computers. And wherever those computers or server forms are located, your data would be subject to the laws and rules of that country as well. Okay. So say, for example, if, it is, uh, if there are issues of national security and uh, you're using cloud services to store your data, then you should be careful about that. Uh, for example, given the context of India and Pakistan, say, so Amazon Web Services, Amazon Web Services, it is also a cloud service and they have uh, their servers available in India as well because India is a huge market and they wanted to have their presence there. So if you are using Amazon Web Services um, for your business or for your company and you are using, uh, so it is a cloud service and you are storing data on their services, so it is possible, in fact, it is uh, more probable that your data would be located on, the, on their servers in India. In fact, it will be replicated on uh, servers all across, Amazon servers, uh, servers all across the globe. But uh, if it is available to you in a geographically closed location, so you can access that data quickly. Jo data aapke paas physically nazdeek hai, so access kar sakte hain. So it is possible ke wo data, it is, it is possible kya, it is definitely possible ke wo data un servers pe maujood hoga. So then that data is subject to Indian laws and everything. So then you should be careful. Like, do you want your data? Is it that sensitive? Uh, uski access to have a government ke paas ho. So you should be careful about that. You should you should have these concerns on you on your mount on your mind as well. So cloud gives you definitely gives you many facilities, but it comes with certain caveats. Your data is no longer with you. Again, the company is responsible for it, but uh, these companies like uh, data has been hacked from their accounts, their servers as well. And companies have lost credit card records of their customers. Company have lost private images of their customers. So if you have your iPhone ko backup karte hain on, your, on Apple's uh, servers, the cloud, okay? So if you have your data or someone, if you are a very important personality or celebrity, your data can be hacked from their servers, your private images can be hacked from their servers. So again, like we, you have to be aware of these issues that can occur with cloud services. So local has its own advantages and disadvantages. Uh, uh, and cloud has it has its own advantages and disadvantages. Okay, so you should be aware of these things. Asha, mobile devices ke liye backup uh, plans again. Individuals ka mana jaise apko kaha na ke if you are using Android devices, you most probably will have a Google uh, Gmail login, and Gmail gives you uh, 
free storage uh, uh, on cloud 15 gb of free storage on its cloud services if you're using an apple device apple gives you that if you're using a samsung device samsung gives you some space so where you can back up your device and images and all that okay so uh, mobile devices ke liye ye options are kafi sare available hain theek hai next we'll talk about the internet and the web so these two things are definitely different the internet is basically a worldwide collection of computer networks so network computer networks when two or more computers are connected with each other and when they can communicate with each other so they they form a computer network and the internet is a global collection of computer networks so hundreds of thousands of computer networks in fact millions of computer networks are connected to the with each other through the internet that is the internet and these millions of computers they belong to businesses government agencies educational institutions universities individuals and all that this is the internet so this is how the internet can be imagined okay so across the world across different continents there are computers there are companies there are devices those are phones they those can be desktops laptops tablets they are all connected uh, they are they are all connected and they 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 can possibly communicate with each other through the internet okay in theory in practice like you can connect with each other with any device that is on the internet <coughs> what is the world wide web the world wide web or the web for short it is a global library of information available to anyone connected to the internet theek hai so global library of information iska isse kya murad hai to ye jo website hoti hai what is website if i am creating a website so that is basically some information about me which i want to make available to the public anybody who is connected to the internet can access that website for example our university's website so if we if you go to the our university's website it will have information about our university or the people working in our university and all those things that that we can show publicly so similarly the web has millions and billions of these websites theek hai and these websites are available so each website is basically uh, a collection of related web pages theek hai and web pages are electronic documents theek hai they are electronic documents uh and those electronic documents can, can carry information about certain things theek okay, about something so the web is a worldwide collection of electronic documents or web pages theek okay, each of which is called a web page the web is a worldwide collection of web pages what is a web page a web page is an electronic document that carries some information now what is a website a website is a collection of related web pages our university's website contains maybe hundreds of web pages related to our university to the, to its different de departments to different people maybe a website is hosted on a web server theek hai a website jo hai koi bhi website ho you cannot access it unless it is hosted it is available on a web server so a web server is a, is, is a computer that delivers requested web pages to your computer or mobile device so say for example hamari university ki jo website hai it is hosted on our web server it is our web server is a computer jo 24 ghante on rehta hai aur jab humne hamari university ki website ko access karna ho so we connect to that web server and we access the web pages stored on that web server theek hai to we can connect to it from our computer or from mobile devices this is an example of uh, a web page theek hai so the web page can show images you you can embed videos in it uh you can listen to audio in it there can be links to audio links to youtube uh, videos there can be embedded videos on it uh there can be images graphics and then there can be uh hyperlinks okay so basically uh for example if you if you look at the cursor the shape of the cursor here, it turns it to a hand or an index finger theek hai so this means that this this image it is hyperlinked if you click on it it is linked to another web page theek hai hyperlink ka matlab kya hai ke it is basically linked or connected to another web page if you click on it another web page will be opened theek hai 
So this is a typical web page. Again, we don't need this example. You on a daily basis, you visit web pages. So what is the software that you use to browse the internet? Browse ka matlab ye hai ke aap kisi cheez ko dhoondte hain, dekhte hain, thik hai? Ya ghumte phirte hain, navigate karte hain. So a browser is basically a software that enables users with an internet connection to access and view web pages. Web pages ko aapne view karna hai, access karna hai, aapne computer pe ya mobile devices pe to use, you use a software called the browser. Browser aapke paas baas sari examples hain, you have Google Chrome, you have Apple Safari, you have Mozilla Firefox, you have Internet Explorer, you have Microsoft Edge. Thik hai, to yeh tamam browsers ki examples hain. So, ye aapke phone pe bhi available hain, in mein se mukhtalif, aur aapke computers pe bhi available hain. You can use them to view any web page. And again, an important part of the web is the search engine. Web or uh, itni badi library ban chuki hai. The internet is the world wide web is so huge. There are billions of web pages, and it is very it becomes very difficult to find relevant information. So that's why we use search engines. Okay, a search engine is software that finds website, web pages, images, videos, news, anything uh, that you are interested in. So aap kis cheez mein interested hain? You basically enter your search query, and then uh, the search engine finds you the re most relevant information according to that search key. Uh, one very popular example of it is Google. In fact, the most popular. Maybe more than 90% of the people use Google as their primary search engine. And there are others as well. Uh, uh, Bing and all these uh, other search engines. Uh, so th th there are other uh, examples as well. Okay. So one is Bing, Bing by Microsoft, and then in the old days there was Alta Vista and Lycos and Yahoo. They were also search engines, not that good, but they were nevertheless uh, search engines. Okay. Uh, then again, uh, since it is the time in like in nowadays we have, uh, okay, I have to take a break here. Uh, uh, we will resume this, this class uh, after some time. Let me take a break. <laughs>